I thought my dad died, but my real father revealed he's still alive. Okay, OP. This is OKOP. Okay, I'm Samuel Donner. And I'm John Fry. And we tell the funniest stories on Reddit and the internet. And John, please, please tell me your story. I want to hear it. I want to be uplifted by it. I want to feel the wind beneath my toes by your breath <laughs> that is telling the story. That, that was beautiful. I don't know if you'll be uplifted, but you'll definitely be shocked. I can, okay. I can guarantee you that. All right. Let's see it. I thought my dad died, but my real father revealed he's still alive. Oh, my God. Back from the dead? <laughs> Not quite. Not Zombie quite. dad? <laughs> Zombie daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Starting off on a high note. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, my dad died when I was eight years old. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, the man I thought who was my dad died. This is like, there's like a lot of intrigue here. Yeah. There's, like, oh, it's, the man that I thought was the dad. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. My mom dated other men, but she's never remarried or had a serious live-in boyfriend since I've basically been without a dad when I was eight. But earlier today, this man came into my work. I work in a movie theater in the concession stand, by the way. So this man came in and kept letting people go ahead of him in line until I was done helping all the customers. I didn't think anything at first, but this guy was kind of nervous, but trying to talk to me. He asked what I recommended to eat and what kind of movies I liked. He seemed friendly, but shy. And, you know, I was just being polite, doing as I do with customers regularly. So he paid and left, and I didn't see when his movie finished because I was busy, or maybe he didn't watch a movie. Anyway, I got off work a little bit ago, and when I got home, this same man was standing in my living room. Wait, this, what? The same guy from the, the movie, movie theater. Man the movie man is in the living room. Okay. In his living room. And he was talking to my mom, and it honestly kind of creeped me out. And then my mom saw me and started panicking at when I asked who it was. And she kept saying, he's no one and he's leaving. But the man said he wasn't leaving until we talked and said, my mom needs to tell me the truth. Can you imagine? God, it just... See, like... Well, you know when you stumble into, like, something that you know is juicy? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I feel like OP just stumbled into a very juicy conversation, and he's not a lot, like, he's not about to just let that shit go. Oh, not at all. This is, like, this is, like, the craziest, like, you know, family history movie yeah. plot. Why <laughs> is he here? Why, Why is the movie man in our house? Tell him the truth. Yeah. Shannon. You can handle the truth. OP says, well, as you can probably guess from the title, this guy is my dad. Wow. I just felt this twist in my stomach. My mom started rambling and saying that my dad that had died was my real dad and how much he loved me and took care of me. And this doesn't change that. The thing is, something happened last year that made me question my mom and my dad in my medical history. My mom said she didn't know anything about it. But today I just yelled at her saying that she could have told me then and there that he wasn't my biological father, and she didn't. She lied. Wait, so the dead dad is not the biological father? Yeah, the mom was basically saying, like, no, don't listen to this guy. Your dead father is your real father. And he's like, why are you lying to me right now, basically? Hmm. But then I asked if this man was telling the truth, and at this point, my mom just started crying and nodding. Well, that's an answer. That's, that's, that's an, an answer, answer, man. That's an answer. I guess I didn't notice at the movie theater because it was never something I'd even look for, but looking at him, it's pretty clear that we look very alike. Or I guess I look like him. Hmm. He tried to talk to me and swore he never knew I existed or else he would have been in my life. My mom didn't deny any of this. I asked her if this man was dangerous or an abusive ex or something. He was offended and she assured me that it wasn't that at all. She wanted to sit down and talk, but I just felt so nauseous and so overwhelmed. I just grabbed my keys and told my mom I was staying at my best friend Josh's house for the night. Dude, there's so much to process there. Like you could talk for hours about about like what the heck is going on what's your relationship with this person why wasn't this person in my life like why is he finding out now there's so many unanswered questions and i can understand op is like all right this is too much i need a piece out and process seriously and he's he's only 17 so like oh wow yeah so op is young so i came to josh's and josh was sympathetic and he let me vent uh, but he did end up falling asleep. So now I'm just sitting here awake and my brain will not shut off. I feel so betrayed by my mom. How could she not tell me the truth? I would have understood when I was little, but now I'm old enough to know where I came from. It feels so unfair that she denied me a father for half of my life. Now, I love my dad that died. 
and I still miss him, but I've wanted a father now for so long because her, his father died when he was eight. Yeah, yeah. He wants that father figure. Oh, for sure. There's so much that I've gone through where I feel like having a dad would have made it so much better and easier. And don't get me wrong. I love my mom. She's incredible, but it's not the same as also having a dad. Yeah. So, especially when this guy is my actual dad. And it seems like he would have done something if he knew. And it seems like, like based on everything that's happened, it seems like he's a relatively good guy. It's, it seems like he at least want to be engaged at a bare, bare yeah. minimum, right? <laughs> now, Opie says, look, I don't know what to say to this guy or to my mom. I know I do have to eventually go home, but I just don't know what I'm supposed to say or do. He probably hates me and thinks I'm a crybaby because I cried and storm out. I feel so lost, which that is so sad. You know, like, I know he, has this negative view of himself because he's oh my anyway but that's like like i feel like we could like squarely say like the dad probably does not think that of op no 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 yeah. nor is it's is, such an is emotional it, time yeah it's it's not wrong at all to cry and start i mean you're just your brain just explodes with yeah. overwhelm i'm sure like imagine your whole framework of who you are and what your life is has just been obliterated 100%. and now you have to piece it together like that's emotionally draining and taxing 100% and at 17 so yeah. much to deal with so op says i went to go home and talk to my mom i was much calmer with a clear head and was ready to hear what she had to say i probably learned more than anyone should ever know about their own conception <laughs> So it turns out my father is not an abusive ex. My mom didn't cheat on my adopted dad or anything shady at all. I'm just the product of a one night stand. My mom said she was out at the bar by herself and she met my dad who was celebrating his 25th birthday alone. My mom said she had just been dumped by for her fiance at the time, not my adopted dad, totally different guy, a week before. And that happened because she learned from the doctor that it was virtually impossible for her to have a child naturally. Oh, that's hard. Really, really rough, right? She said her and my dad uh, did use protection, but somehow she still had me. So I'm her miracle baby considering the circumstances. Hmm. Isn't that crazy? She's can think you're doing everything right. Still have a baby. She went back to the hotel that he took her to after she found out that she was pregnant, but they couldn't find any info on my dad staying there. He didn't actually give her his real first name. He gave her a fake first name. Huh. She said this was before social media was a thing, so she couldn't just like search him up online. So she decided she would just have to raise me on her own. She also admitted that she panicked when my biological dad showed up because to her, he was literally just this guy from a random one night stand 17 years ago. Like uh, imagine, like it was overwhelming yeah. for the mom too, I'm, I'm sure. So she ended up panicking. How did they find each other? I think the guy found out and reached out to her, but that I don't even know that if they... Yeah, fully... how, would you, how would you find that? Yeah, maybe it's like some 23andMe shit. Yeah, maybe, maybe. She didn't really know who he was or if he was going to try and get custody of me or if I was going to try and run away with him or something like that. My mom admits that she could have been calmer from the beginning and maybe we could have all talked and sorted it out. But honestly, at this point, I don't blame her for it. As for my adaptive dad, the man that raised me, she said that she didn't meet him until I was almost two. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. This is late in life. Yeah. Late, late in life. They got married when I was three, and then he officially adopted me after they got married. She showed me the official adoption certificate to prove it. Reflecting on it now, I realize that I've never seen a picture of my dad and I when I was a baby. Just pictures of me as a toddler and up. She said that he accepted me as his own, loved me, and was and absolutely considered himself my father. I told her my bio dad showing up doesn't rewrite history. I'll never not see my adoptive dad as my father. If anything, it makes me love him even more knowing that he treated me and loved me as his own flesh and blood. Wow, it's so nice. That's yeah. so wholesome. Wholesome, you know? Is it the end? There we go. That's the end. Wow. I, I love that ending. That's a great ending. Like, and I, and I think for all those single moms out there and for people looking to date single moms, accept those kids as your own. Hey, come on, you know? Yeah, no, come on. Adopt them. You know, they're good They're good kids. Leads. It leads to beautiful stories like this. It leads to beautiful stories. And some, maybe someday you can be on OKOP. If you play your cards right. Hey, there we go. But you know, if you don't have a daddy to call your own, you can always call us daddy and make sure that you subscribe on YouTube and follow us on the podcast. And if you really want to call us daddy and all those oh, dirty names, we know you do when you know, we know you say underneath the colors, make sure you follow the lead of our main lady, Kathy Quigley, Kathy right. Quigley, Kathy. our 
first Patreon supporter, but hopefully not our last. Support us at Patreon if you want to see more stories like this. Absolutely. The stretches we're going to connect the story <laughs> with the with the follow is is incredible. It's just <laughs> we keep upping the ante. Always up the ante, baby. All right. Oh. Talk soon, babes. Peace. Peace.